Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAPS at Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 3, Questions 8 to 10. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at some acid-base chemistry, and we have to have some prior knowledge in the henderson hasselbalch equation. The reason why I say that is because if you don't have knowledge in the equation, it will be hard to conceptualize what's happening. So um, we're told that citric acid, it's a tribasic acid, it has 3D protonations at 25 degrees. So let's just write them down quickly because I want to show you some cool tricks. Something that you don't get taught right away in chemistry class, but it's something that you have to understand because chemistry, biology, it's not like only one thing's happening. Multiple things are happening at once. So if I just write it down here, so H3A, so let's that's, that's say that's our citric acid. So we've got our arrows going back and forth. So whenever you see these two arrows, it means that the acid is most likely going to be a weaker acid. Because if it was, let's say, hydrochloric acid or an acid that fully uh, fully dissociates, sorry, it's just going to be one straight arrow. It's not going to go back and forth. So that's, if you ever get a question about, is it a weak acid or a strong acid, you know straight away it's a weaker acid because it, it, it's going to go back and forth between product and, I guess, the reactant or the original product. So we've got pKa is... 2.92 and then we've got our deprotonator form and then we go towards our double deprotonator form so it's going to be sorry a2 minus so the pka here is 4.28 and then we're going to go like that to our final 3d protonated form at pka 5.21 so when we take a look at this, what it's telling us is, so this is where the henderson hasselbalch equation comes into effect here. So if we have our non-protonated form and our deprotonated form here, if it's telling us the pKa is 2.92, what that means is that at 2.92, so if our pH equals 2. If our pH equals 2.92, so that means this side has to equal zero. So for this to equal this, this has to equal zero. So log 10, 1 equals zero, which means that we have an equal concentration of our conjugate base or deprotonated form to our acid. So that means when we hit the pKa 2.92, we have an equal amount of our citric acid here and our deprotonated form of our citric acid. However, if we move closer, if we move our pH closer to this side, we're going to have somewhere in the region of, we might still have our citric acid, but it's going to be a very small amount. We're going to have a lot greater amount of our deprotonated form. And just look at the equation. Think about it. If we increase pH here, this, and let's say pK is constant, obviously, this has to go up because you have to satisfy the equation. So therefore, the deprotonated form goes up if the pH goes up. So you can see as we increase the pH here towards this pKa, we're going to get more of this deprotonated form, and we're going to get less of the um, uh, original citric acid form. So there's the same principle here now for these two here. So what happens then, at the same time, as we're increasing the pH, we're also deprotonating this deprotonated form to the double deprotonated form. You might think that it's not a high amount. It is, it is still a little bit in the solution, but once we hit 4.28 pKa, so once the pH is equal to the pKa, 4.28, we're going to have equal forms of the single deprotonated and the double deprotonated. And it's the same principle if we go from this side to this side. So think about it this way. Use the henderson hasselbalch equation to conceptualize what's happening. That's what you should be doing. So if we take a look at the first question, it says, what is the predominant species in a solution of citric acid at pH 5? So if we're going to be pH 5, we're going to be looking between here because in this species here, what we're going to have obviously predominantly is going to be the double deprotonated, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the only species. So they might have asked the question, what species would you find at this pH? So um, you just have to understand that it's not the only species, so the double deprotonated. You also do have a species of the single deprotonated. You're going to have species of the um, triple deprotonated, 
But remember, it's going to be 50-50 once we hit the PKA, but we haven't hit the PKA yet. It's only five, which means there's going to be a lot less of this deprotonated form. There's going to be a lot less of obviously the single deprotonated form. And there's going to be probably hardly any in the um, neutral form. So you know, therefore, the answer has to be this. But again, don't get tricked. It says the predominant. It is the predominant. But if you ask what species were there, all the species you'd say would be one, two, three. But the correct answer here for, for question, oh, sorry, jump the gun there. For question A is going to be B, uh, C, sorry. Just got to double check before I say the incorrect one. So the answer is C. So if we move over to question nine, I might get my toolbar out here. Well, cool. So if we move over to question nine, it states at what pH value are the concentrations of the single deprotonated and the double deprotonated ions the same? So remember what we said, it's when the pH equals the pKa. So if we take a look here at this side, if I remove you, remove you. So remember, we said that for the single to equal the double, so we're going to have 50% here. And 50% here, this has to equal the pH. So remember, it's because if we do 50% over 50%, that equals 1. So log 10, 1 equals 0. So therefore, you're going to have 50%, 50% equal amount at the pH, if it's 4.28, pKa 4.28. So the answer for 9 has to be well, it's not 3.6, it's not 4.1, it's not 4.75. The answer has to be D. It's none of those. The answer is 4.28. So now if you move on to the last question, I can remove the whole screen here. It's asking us, I'll get rid of you as well, uh, as the temperature increases, the proportion of D protonated species increases. So remember, if we take a look here, I've included them in this uh, in the stimulus for a reason. Remember, Ka is the dissociation uh, uh, constant, or the, the amount of um, ions that have been dissociated from a substance in a solution. So let's say it's Ka is equal to, so we can put here our neutral form, and then we can put our protonated form. So it could be hydronium ions, same, same thing. Okay, so our conjugate base. So this is our Ka. So we know, obviously, if we're going to increase our deprotonated species, so we're increasing the top side, that means our Ka has to increase. But it is the trick. So we love to represent numbers in an easy way to read. That's why we say pH, and we don't represent it as just the hydronium ion concentration. Because if we represented it as the hydronium ion concentration, it'd be a massive value, and it'd just be such a pain to work with. That's why we stick a negative log here and it gives us the easy numbers to work with and that's why again it's kind of this the reciprocal it's flipped because it's negative log that means for pHs that are low you have high hydronium ion concentrations so it's the same principle here for pKa so Ka you stick a log negative log Ka it's the exact same principle that means if our pH, so it's going to equal our pKa, that means if we have a low pKa, we have a high Ka. So therefore, for question 10, our answer for B, or for 10, has to be B. Because we have increased our Ka, because the deprotonated species are increased. But if we stick a negative log in front of the Ka, we're going to end up with our um decrease in pKa. So it's important for this sort of acid-based chemistry, you familiarize yourself with what pH is, pKa, pKw, um, pKb, pOH, what's conjugate base, what's conjugate acid, um, why do we stick negative log in front of everything. Um, it's important to know these because for question, I think the last question in the test, so unit 39, you're going to go through, we're going to have to go through the henderson hasselbalch equation again but specifically with PKW, PK, PKB, POH, and those different factors. But just familiarize yourself with them now so that when you reach 
that point. Um, it's just easy. But again, if you're having trouble, look at the Henderson Hasselbeck equation. This is your answer. This is your cheat sheet. Because that's if you can understand the Henderson Hasselbeck equation, you can understand what's going on here in this stimulus. So if you do have any more questions about um, this topic, you can post your comments in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.